Isaiah 33 and 6. And it reads, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash. Next, double honors to the head apostle slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere items. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here for a bear, this scripture right here is speaking volume right about now. The Isaiah 33 and 6 is speaking volume right about now, Israel. I got, I got family members, co workers. You see people on social media. You see, you, see, you see these bank runs. You see people making these bank runs. People are literally losing it right about now. And the scripture said it was going to be that. You see? Miserable. We're going to see if we can get that scripture too. Miserable are they that are not nurtured. You know what I'm saying? Meaning you're not you're not pretty much raised with this word inside of you. Miserable are they, right? Miserable. Isaiah 33 and 6 is it how important this knowledge is. That's why that's why we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can get some scriptures through the spirit. Just not getting off, man. Yeah, yeah, more sad faces than it was last week, man. More sad faces, man. More sad stories, all, all of the above. I can't pay the rent. I can't pay the light. I can't get gas. I can't afford um groceries. That's, that's all the story. And, and it's going to get worse than that, man. Isaiah 33 and 6. And it reads, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. The knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, of the Bible. We're starting to come into the time where we're truly starting to see and realize how important this word is. And what it really means to have it, man. The Lord is really showing us what happens when you got the word and what happens when you reject the word. You, you see, this, this is what's keeping us stable. While everybody else is really going insane in the membrane. Real talk. Having, an, having the knowledge of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, this comforter, this truly is keeping us stable and stripped of salvation. The fear of the Lord, because that's what wisdom starts off from. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And I don't want to get this too. I'm going to be all over the place. I'm just not really getting in. And I just want to do a quick little lesson through the spirit. Strike while the iron is hot. You know, you see? All these banks shut. Now, people got all that money. The bag, remember, you people was chasing the bag, right? We was chasing out the knowledge, wisdom, understanding the scripture. Now, we was getting our daily bread, of course, but that wasn't our only mind state. It wasn't money, 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 money. Look, you Hebrew Israelites too, you Israelite groups, all y'all are chasing money. You see, fame, little, little fortune, validation from everybody, from non-believers, from whoever, doing the base. That's the only thing y'all was thinking about when we was um, putting this word inside of us, right? Proverbs 11. Just, just some quick. You're starting to see this and you're starting to see people really freak the hell out. Proverbs chapter 11. Look, look, and it look, ain't, ain't nothing popped off yet. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in a day of wrath. The carnal riches. The carnal riches profit not in a day of wrath. Having a big giant bankroll. Um, talk, talking to your money. Remember, people putting money up to their ears, talking to it and all that. Nah, that's not going to help you out. Richest prophet, not in a day of wrath. See, the Lord's wrath is coming upon the earth, and you people, you wicked people, are getting caught smack dead in the middle of it. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Richest prophet, not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. You should have known that the Lord was going to eventually make a move on this place. Remember, Lord Yahweh is waiting to come back to rule the earth in righteousness. Well, you thought you thought America, Babylon was going to go on forever in wickedness, huh? You, you Israelites thought y'all were going to be able to just chase the bag and ignore the words of the Lord for, for a couple of hundred more years, right? Right? No, nobody won't going to have to seek the Lord. You're just going to live a careless life, that YOLO nonsense. It's all catching up to you now. It's all case. The Lord said, this is not our rest. Let's get that right quick. And I'm just flowing in the spirit. 
Strike why the iron is hot, right? That's what, that's what we was told. When the spirit is on you, you do a lesson, get it done. Don't wait. Wait, wait for what? Micah chapter 2, verse 10. And all you Israelite women that left your Israelite husbands, you know what I'm saying? To chase a bag, to chase your career. Out of there. Out of there. Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart. I Meaning come out of the ways, the philosophies, the doctrines, the dogmas of Babylon. Arise and depart and return back to Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. Return back to this knowledge. Because once again, this is the only thing that's going to keep us stable, right? Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. See, the Lord is making Israel run uncomfortable right about them. You was at ease, and the scriptures tell, um, tell you, um, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. I'm going to see if I can get that too. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. This is just a pit stop. You see? Serve our punishment, then get the hell out of here. That's why we was brought to America, Babylon the Great, to serve captivity. Not to get comfortable, not to get at ease, not to think. See, see, the majority of you, Nick Rose, Latin, and Native Americans, y'all think this is the kingdom of heaven. The majority of you so-called Nick Rose, Latinos, and Native Americans, y'all think this is heaven. You didn't got used to being in hell. You, you got relaxed in the hell, man. Just gonna say, this is polluted. This is a polluted land. It shall destroy you. You put your hopes and your dreams in a fallen system. And now look. You put your hopes and your dreams in a fallen system. And now look, Israel. Look, look what's going on now. Now you're losing it. Now you're bugging the hell out now, man. It shall destroy you. And look at the mind state of our people. Look at what being in Babylon too long has done to our people, man. They've been in America too long. Look at them, man. The men and the women. Look at it. This took on this damn black culture nonsense. This dead ass culture which leads to death. Look at our people, man. You don't even want to look at them. We hate to even come outside, but we got to get our daily bread. You know what I'm We got to mingle in society. Shopping, things of that nature. But other than that, we don't want to see you people, man. Even with a sore destruction, man. And the scriptures told us to be pilgrims upon earth. I want to get that Isaiah, though. Woe to them that are ease in Zion. What is it, Isaiah 31? Or is it 30? I think it's 31. Bear with me. It was Amos. Amos chapter 6, verse 1. And it reads, Woe destruction unto them that are ease in Zion. Remember, this is not our rest. You made Babylon your rest, Israel. You made, you made your bed comfortable in a sinking ship, Israel. You forgot all about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? Woe to them, destruction unto them that are at ease in Zion. While you were sitting back comfortable at ease, um, what would it say? Um, you, you was feeling secure. When the scriptures say, um, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. Look, that door of mercy is closing fast, man. You can't see it. The doors of mercy. That grace period is about to end, Israel. Amos chapter 6, verse 1, woe destruction unto them for you Israelite men and you women, man. Y'all about to catch pure hell out here, man. Straight up, man. Woe to, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Comfortable. Let's get that definition. Let's get that definition for ease. See if it'll pop up. Let's see. Let's see. Bear with me. Basically, when I looked up the word ease, it's pretty much you comfortable. Woe to them that are comfortable in Zion. Destruction unto them. Because remember, Micah 2 and 10 said, look, this is not our rest, right? So woe unto the Israelites that are comfortable here in Babylon. And trust in the mount you trust in this government. And trust in the mount of Samaria, a.k.a. America. Code name for America, man. You see? Which are named chief of the nations. To whom the house of Israel came. We came over here to serve hardcore punishment. Slavery. And Israel and got comfortable. And the scriptures are saying, woe unto you now. Destruction unto you now, right? You see? You ain't got a pot to piss in or one to throw out of. And you comfortable here in Babylon, right? But the scriptures say, woe unto you, man. Destruction unto you, right? Hey, oh, yeah. And the scriptures say, they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Isaiah. This is, just, this is just something quick. The Lord bringing misery upon you now. 
And the only thing that's going to keep us stable is the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures. That's it. Let's get this. Trusting in a sinking ship. Isaiah chapter 31. Verse 1, and it reads, Woe, look, look, destruction again. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. You put your trust in America. Man, you tr put your trust in the, in the government pretty much. You see? Egypt, you, tr you put your trust in bondage. That's why the scripture says, Is Israel a homeborn slave? Why, why is he spoiled? Our people have been spoiled. You really think every day is going to be the same? You think th this devil going to really keep feeding you, right? You see? He's going to give you a job to make some money. It's over now for this place, man. Warn to them that go down to Egypt for help. You're still trusting in the government. You're trusting in your damn section. Hey, you're trusting in your food step. You're trusting in your job. You're trusting in the bank that you got your money in. And, and now look. Now look. Long ass. I'm seeing video. I've been watching videos all day of long ass lines of people trying to get money out of the bank and can't even get it. And stay on horse. You trust in the power structure of this place. When you see the, the this, this devil is losing power, and trust in cherry, you trust in the military. You know what I'm saying? And it's weapons and things of that nature, right? Because there are many, and in the horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not into the holy one of Israel, neither seek the Lord. It, this place is crumbling right in front of your eyes, and Israel still ain't seeking the Lord. This place is literally cr um, crushing, you know what I'm saying? Being totally consumed right in front of your eyes, man. All right? What's that damn? Uh, the, the chickens are finally coming home to roost, man. All hell breaking loose. Stores are closing down by the thousands. People are losing jobs by the thousands. The, the whole damn system is corrupt. And you still ain't seeking the Lord? That's, a, that's how you know something wrong up there, yo. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 11, and it reads, For whoso despises wisdom, the knowledge of wisdom, understanding of the scripture. Remember, this shall be the stability of thy time, right? For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, remember, um, desire the sincere milk that you may grow thereby. Israel, you're supposed to be desiring this milk, the, a.k.a. this word. You see, these grapes, the apples, the wine, the bread. Which represents this word, right? This is what you're supposed to desire, but you despise it, right? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 11. For whoso despises, meaning hate, wisdom, and nurture, which is the scriptures, he is miserable. Now, look at our people. They bugging the hell out of it. They miserable as hell right about now. But, but misery, love company, and more misery is to come. It says their hope is vain. Because they put their hope and their trust in a fallen system. They put their hope and their trust in sleazy. So it's all vain. It's empty. It's worthless. And lamentation, I think, lamentation four. Matter of fact, let's just get it right quick. Because it says, um, and their and their hope is vain, right? So let's get, let's get a quick precept and I'm coming right back. You put your hope and your trust in sleazy in his system. You, you, it's like you Nick Rose Latins and Native Americans. You look, you bug the hell out, man. The Lord is showing you what happens when you put your trust. The Lord said, never trust thine enemy. You see, now you got to hurry up and try to make bank runs to see if you can get some damn money out of the damn bank. You know what I'm saying? But look, before it ain't no money in the bank. Let's get this. Lamentation chapter 4. You have been warned, though. Lamentation chapter 4, verse 17. Remember, the scripture said that hope is vain, right? Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17, and it reads, As for us, meaning the Hebrew Israelites, Negroes, Latins, and Native American Indians, so called, our eyes has yet failed for our vain hell. Remember, the scripture says your hope is vain. If you're not hoping in the God of the Bible, your hope is vain. Because the scripture, I think it's um, Psalms 130, let Israel hope in the Lord. Or is it, it might be Psalms 124, let Israel hope in the Lord. If you're hoping in anything else, it's vain, Israel. Our eyes as yet fell for our vain help. Going to these heathens, trusting in Babylon, trusting in the so-called white man, these Edomites. It's all vain. And our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. You, th you thought America was set up to save you? You thought Babylon was set up to deliver you and make your whole life comfortable forever? Hell no, man. Trusting in a nation that won't even set up to help you, man. And, and now look. Look what happens when you don't trust in the Lord. Look, just look, Israel. Look at what happens when you trust in your enemy. You, you're looking real stupid right about now, right? 
You looking real foolish right about now. Let's let's go back though. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 11. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, they, our people don't fear the Lord. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you look, look, y'all, y'all, tr y'all trusting in the damn Capri Sun, y'all trusting in that damn juice. And now this devil's getting ready to make it mandatory that you take that, that see here, that digital all, in order to for you to receive some funds, man. And rich is profit not in the day of wrath, man. Look, look, their hope is vain, their labors unfruitful, unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. So it don't matter how much you work, it don't matter how many jobs you got, it's all vain. It leads to nothing. It leads to nothing but heartaches and pain. Cause, cause now look, you work all look, and then, and then you, you you got this small ass income tax check. The government robbed you of your income tax money. You see? Took all kind of money out your damn check throughout the year. Now look, gave you five hundred dollars, gave you seven hundred dollars. They have income tax checks small as hell, and you mean to tell me, look, you spent all your regular check money thinking that your income tax check, you know what I'm saying, was going to be big and all that. That's saying you know, you get your damn income tax man tell you that you're only going to receive seven hundred dollars. Now look. <clears throat> Then you go got to go around taking out all these damn loans, trying to borrow money from Tom, Dick, Harry, Larry, Curly, and Mo. You despise his words, and look at the end results, man, of you uh, despising his word. The scripture told us to be as pilgrims upon the earth right about now, knowing this. But look, we're the crazy guys on the street corner, though, right? Remember, remember those crazy guys that was warning you week in and week out of of, of death, of evils, of war, of pestilence, of destruction. Remember those crazy guys? They look. They don't look so crazy now, right? Huh? Those crazy guys that was out there on the highways and byways, look, they don't look so crazy right about now, right? And their work's unprofitable, you see? So no matter how hard you work over here in Babylon, you know what I'm saying, look, look, misery, evils on top of evils on top of evils, man. Let's get, let's get this. Like I said before, I just, I just wanted to hit some, strike while the iron is hot. This is on Ezekiel 7 and 5, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh. Through his only begotten son, Yahweh shine and evil, meaning bad times, and only evil, meaning more bad times, behold, it's come. The end, and end is come, the end of this age, and how you thought it was going to go out. And end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. And so, of course, this man going to make more unrighteous decrees. He's going to make it hard for you to get your money. Look, remember, Israel, this is a crook. You're expecting a crook, you know what I'm saying, to, to do, do things the straight way. This man is accustomed to doing evil. Evil. You see? So that's all that man going to continue to do is evil. This ain't our rest. I got, I, got, I got one more scripture. Then I'm, then I'm going to wrap it up, man. I'm going to wrap it up. Seek, seek the Lord, Israel. Bear with me. Let's see. This is our second Ezra chapter eight. Now you try. Now you out there killing yourself, trying to make some damn bank runs, looking crazy as hell. You, you're through Israel. The majority of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you're through. Second Ezra chapter eight verse fifty, and it reads: For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world. Because they had walked in great pride. The scripture said many men. We're going to keep bringing the scripture out. You see? Victuals shall be so good, cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves to be in a good case. And, and even then shall evils grow upon the face of the earth. And even then shall evils, evils meaning bad times, grow upon the face of the earth, man. If the sword don't get you, the famine will. If the sword don't get you, the famine will, man. Lord's gonna destroy this place, man. Now I want to get another scripture. Look, look, seek him ten times more. Seek the Lord ten times more. Remember, uh, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. You see. Remember, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them, as to veil upon a one with child, and they shall not escape. What is that? Um. <clears throat> Let's see, um, Proverbs the eighth chapter. Proverbs chapter eight, verse eleven. 
Now, now we're truly, truly starting to see how important this wisdom is. This is Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11, and it reads, For wisdom, the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, right? The true riches is better than rubies. And all the things that thou may be desired, so like, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared unto it. You see all the things that people are desiring to have? Well, the scriptures are telling us that wisdom is above all them. Wisdom is above all them, man. So I just want to do a quick lesson through the spirit. Matter of fact, let's get one more. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 40, and it reads, O my people, the children of Israel, which consist of your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, hear my words. The words that are being spoken by the prophets of the Lord. See, the Lord's revealing everything now, man. The, the prophets that was prophesying of peace, you're going to know if the Lord truly sent them if peace come. Now, the prophets that was prophesying of evil, bad times, storms, floods, contagions, doom and gloom, when that comes to pass, you're going to know that the Lord truly sent them, right? Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 40, and it reads, O my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, meaning in these bad times, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. And, and what does a pilgrim do? A pilgrim moves from one spot to the other spot. They don't get comfortable, all right? They don't make no certain place their rest. They're always on the move, you see? And look, and that's how we're supposed to be. I got the definition for the word pilgrim. It's a noun. A person who sojourns, he's always on a journey. He's always on a mission to a sacred place. You see, for religious region, uh, reasons. You see, a traveler. Pretty much someone that's always on the go. Ne never stationary. And that's how it's going to be soon come. We're going to have to go from this spot to that spot to that spot to that spot. Be constantly on the move. Meaning what? A pilgrim never gets comfortable. He, a pilgrim never makes one certain place his rest. So let's go right back. You saw that definition. So let's so one more time. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 40. And it reads. Salakia. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 40. And it reads, O oh my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle, to thy battle. And in those evils, meaning these bad times, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. So I just want to hit something quick through the spirit. Evils and only evils, miseries. Look, man, all, look, all you see is judgment, man. And riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness Delivered from death. Seek the Lord, Israel. This place is crumbling right in front of our eyes, man. See how important wisdom is? Shalom.